winter had been bitter cold. In the classrooms at university, our breath hung in the air, and the ink was black ice in the ink pots. One day, when a lecture was droning on, a boy touched me with his elbow and whispered, "Look, the snow has turned to rain." I left the classroom, went outside, and stood for a time, feeling the warm, sweet rain on my face. Then I started walking. I left Paris and headed for the sea. The snows melted. Underneath them, it was spring. Spring. It rose like a great tide. Spring came on forever. Don't be afraid. I'm on off. Do you have something to eat? Do you have wine? I'll pay for it. That house, are people living in it? Soldiers, everywhere. Soldiers. Who are you? A student asking for a safe conduct through your territory. How do you get here? On foot. Fifty francs for a fine gentleman like you. But I am no gentleman. All I have in the world is twenty. That'll do. I'll take that. But I have a long way ahead of me. <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> we ran this man to earth. We found this on him. Well, there's one coin. There's more. Make him tell you where the rest is. I gave him that myself an hour ago for wine. Oh, he sells wine, does he? Probably got a pot of them put away somewhere. Not me. I've got nothing. All right. All right, cut his throat. Captain! This old man is the only human being I've laid eyes on between here and the city. The only one. You can't kill him. Don't you see? He's part of the land, like the trees and the streams. If he dies, this will no longer be a province. It will be a desert. As captain of a province, you must pay him for your own sake. Do you hear that? I'm captain of a province. <laughs> All right, get out of here and keep your money. What about the peasant? I said, cut his throat. Come on, come on.
from me. Oh, dear Lord, what pain is this? My love has gone from me. He has gone away to woe. Weeping, he said farewell. Oh, dear Lord, what grief is this? Weeping, he said farewell. Where, oh, where is he now? Oh, bring him back to me. Oh, dear Lord, what grief is this? Oh. Do you know a place where they'd give me shelter? Did you listen to my song? Yes, I liked it. Then no young man that no house gives shelter. Only love does. But as it doesn't last, take refuge in it while you can. Come with me to Domata House. They give you shelter there. Asking shelter for the night. Good evening. What is your name? Heron of Foix, student from Paris. In the third animus mutatas titre formas. Corpora deceptis, namus metatis et ilas. Sit down. You are welcome. Tell me about Paris. Wolves come into the city at night to dig up the dead in the cemeteries. They are the only creatures in Paris that eat well. What is it like on the roads? It's a beautiful spring. The countryside is lovely, except for the corpses in the rivers and the trees. Nothing is planted. The peasants are hiding. They dig in, they bury themselves, they become almost invisible, but it's no use just so long as they have one loaf of bread or a single rotten apple to be taken. Have you ever seen grey crows pecking and tearing at a dying animal? Our captains and knights are the crows on the body of this Christian country. How marvellous the human appetite for death. I intend to leave all that behind me. You'll have to go a very long way. But there's peace here. I even heard a peasant woman singing a love song. The Martin belongs to the king. I am his intendant. As king's property, it is inviolate. Feel at home, Heron de Foix. Thank you, sir. A safe journey. I thank you. Good morning, student. Good morning. Please convey my respects to your master and thank him for his hospitality. I... 
I was writing in my journal. You must be the student who spent the night at Damarta. Yes. I am the Lady Claudia of Saint-Jean, the daughter of this house. Yes, I saw you. Where are you journeying to? To the sea. That's a long way. Have you ever seen the sea? No, have you? No. But I know what it looks like. A smooth, glittering plain of water, slowly canting up and down. Boats gliding to and fro. I dream of it. I dream of it on the bench in your house. Then I saw you. I can read and write. My father taught me. I've read The Romance of the Rose and The Song of Roland and many other ballads and homilies. I like verse best. I write verse sometimes. May I see? Like a man on a dusty road, counting the hours to the well in his garden, stumbles and finds at his feet a stream of crystal sweet water. Thus I woke in the light of my morning to the darkness of mystery, beheld a face of such beauty that it blinded the stars of my voyage. You can have it if you wish. Thank you. Goodbye. I will think about you on your journey. Perhaps I shall say a prayer for your safety. Would you be my patroness? The lady who protects me on my travels. What is your name? Heron of Foix. Heron of Foix. I will be your lady. Here is your token. You are now journeying in my honor. in a day of your life. Behold a pilgrim newly returned from the Holy Land uh, with the feast of the True Cross for sale. Odd. I was told that the True Cross is now in Rome. So it is, except for the splinter, which, by the way, fits perfectly. Not interested? Well, here is the very nail which pierced our Saviour's left hand. And it isn't even rusty. A stone that was thrown at Mary Magdalena. Observe the blood. You can have it cheap. <laughs> You're contemptuous, young man. My person demands reverence. Your spirit needs chastening. Gently, Pilgrim, gently. Only let that stuff of yours point a safe road to the sea, and I'll praise you every step of my way. To the sea? There's only one safe road. Where is it? Why do you want to go to the sea? To find freedom. Freedom in what sense? God's freedom or man's? Is there a difference? God's freedom has a price? I'll pay gladly. And if the price were above me, a coinage? I'll pay it. Would you? Yeah, very well. Well, soon enough. said, the very roots of earth shall rise up to slay, and there shall be naught but death and counter death. Who is this, master? Hmm? You shall meet him.
Master, I bring you a candidate. A candidate for coming to a land unknown. Yes, I'd like to see such a land. We were 43 when we set out. 43 men of all ages and races wedded in one common wish, to see the Holy Land, to walk in the places he had walked, and finally to worship at the Holy Sepulchre. We never worshipped there. Nine of our number drowned in a raging sea off Cyprus. Thirteen died of thirst in the desert, their tongues black and swollen. The heathen Saracen took off eight more, the youngest and most handsome, to serve as sodomites among the men who have only appetite for men. We turned back. Nine more gave up their souls while homeward bound in ways too terrible to tell. Six were left. We six built this craft and set out on a new journey. Out of our darkness came light. God granted me the gift of revelation, the power to see not with the dim vision of the eyes, but with the terrible brightness of the soul. I saw the world as it had become, a cesspool wherein humanity drowns itself besmirched and beslimed. Life itself in such a world is no more than a flickering lamp blown about by every wind of iniquity. That world is dying. We go to found a better one, a new holy land. We six. Or may it be seven. Will there be freedom in this world of yours? Freedom to obey God's edicts. How shall I know if they are God's or yours? God speaks through me. This you will accept without question. I accept nothing without question. This will change. Brothers. You will answer whatever I may ask. Have you had carnal knowledge of woman? Yes, and happily. Repent. Repent. For what? Lust not after woman. She will ensnare your soul and corrupt your flesh forever. Take your sins upon you, brothers. Expiate them in your blood. But they are my sins. Why punish them? Punishment for one's own sins is vain and pleasurable. We must suffer for our brothers. In this way, one becomes a brother. Atone for his wickedness. Let your pain absolve the rotting beast. I am not a rotting beast. I'm a man. And therefore, a rotting beast. Is that a woman's garment that you wear? It's a gift for my lady. Pluck it off. It is vile. Fire is womankind. Throw it in the fire, let it be consumed. But she is the patroness of my journey. Vile and impure. Unrepentant. Of what do you want me to repent? Hear me, for I speak revelation. God created the envelope of flesh in which the soul abides. But Satan altered the design, adding the vile appendages. These he created. The seat of all the evil that man looses on the world. In our brotherhood we abjure them. Would you join us? You must do likewise. You ask me to give up my manhood? To rid yourself of the devil's incubus as we have done. I speak for life everlasting. Not for life. You invent another kind of death. You would defy me. I thought you searched for freedom. But you are slaves. Slaves!
Good evening. What kind of a spectacle was that? My good sir, you were the first to see, and free of charge, too, a performance of a new tableau, a mirror of nature, called the most strange and curious battle. It sets forth a real-life happening. Mounted knights in full regalia, set upon by a horde of peasants, torn from their horses, and done to bloody death by scythes and pitchforks. Knights set upon by peasants? My Pope and I saw the same this very day. The Silver Spur. The leader of the knights, boy. Did you ever see the like? And that was the horse he rode. A beauty, eh? Fact this butter. We'll slaughter him tonight and have a feast. You're welcome to share with us. Knights on charges, killed by peasants. They're rising everywhere. They're even storming castles. Imagine, soldiers in armor of dirt, attacking castles with sticks and stones. The peasants have risen to destroy the world. It's no concern of mine. What is that sound? Is it the sea? Yes. The sea. At last. You've never been to the sea before? No. Always be there. I won't. <laughs> you give me a present? Yes. This? No. Don't be mean. I can't give it to you. It's a token for my lady. <laughs> Your lady? You're no knight. How would you have a lady? I have one. <laughs> one who lives in a pigsty? Who lives in Damartin. Damartin? Then you have no lady. That, that's one of the places the peasants burned. Everybody there is dead, they say. You're lying. <laughs> no, I'm not. about Damartin, that it was taken by the peasants. Damartin, Laon, Chanlieu. That horse, sell it to me. How much? All I have. The girl is still alive. She's in the little priory, across the valley. God bless you. Benedict was omnipotent, Deus, Pater, 
et filius et spiritus sanctus. Amen. Ite missa est. Do you remember that morning in your garden? I understood too. Yes, I remember. It was the day before they came. They set fire to the outbuildings. Then they came into the yard. My father walked toward them. I thought they were going to let him pass. But when he was in the middle, a man hit him with a club. He made no sound. And the others swarmed over him. I ran into the woods. I hid there all night watching the house burn. In the morning I came back. Everybody was dead. Oh, Father, Father. Don't cry. They gave me a sanctuary here. They gave me a pillow because my father was the king's intendant. Why did they kill him? He was always kind to them. God hates the peasant and would like to see him eat thistles and go about naked and all fours. The world is God's cathedral. Each stone has its place, and each man is such a stone. The peasant has left his place, and thus he has sinned against God. Yes. But even now, you may be sure that God is preparing his revenge. The peasant shall purge their sin in their own blood and in the blood of their sons. What's to become of you, Claudia? You can't stay here. The prior is awaiting word from the convent of Saint Denis as to whether they will receive me. Is that where you wish to go? No. I prefer to go to my cousin Robert of Loris at Elmanorville. I'll take you there. Father, I have come to ask of the Lady Claudia to her cousin Robert of Loris. Are you related? Distantly. Very well, if she insists. Although I should have thought that finding herself an orphan and without possessions would have made her listen to the voice of God and enter a convent. However, I shall pray for her welfare. Thank you for sheltering me, Father. Turn always to the Mother Church for support and guidance, child, and to her blessed saints for patience. May God go with you. In nomine Patris, Filii, Spiritus Sacri. Oh, wait, my candlesticks are slipping. Candlesticks? We must eat. It's two days to Almanorville. You have no money, have you? Nothing. The prior said every day to look to the church for support. So I did.
You, Goldsmith. How much? I don't want your things. And for you two, it would be better to get out of here before I have you locked up. My good fellow. These candlesticks are silver, are they not? These candlesticks were saved for me when a mob pilfered our possessions. I will not sell them. No one in my family sells. But, um, I will consider leaving them in pledge. And, uh, and how much did your ladyship have in mind? Whatever sum is proper. Five years a nun in the convent of St. Clair. Observe the shorn hair, the the pale circlet of flesh where formerly she wore the ring which wedded her to heaven. She'll sing you a psalm for the good of your souls, gentlemen, even while she ministers to the appetites of your flesh. Come, gentlemen, who of you can say he has swine a bride of Christ? And now, gentlemen, come in this morning from the estates of the most fastidious noble. Used only once by the noble chevalier, and warranted to be no older than thirteen years. We want a room. For how long? Tonight. The whole night? Yes. No rooms for sleeping. Sleep over there. Perhaps. Who shall have who? Each man to his taste. A girl for every taste. And only fifteen something. Rather than be busy and happy, the picture life. You there, you stallion of a man, bursting with hubris. It's plain to see you can't make up your mind. One is more tempting than another. Very well, I have an answer to your dilemma. Take all three at a special price. Thirteen sons. Lie down and I'll cover you with my cape. It is proper for you, Heron, to lie beside me. You are my knight. And I trust you as I would a brother. Do you know about pure love and earthy love? I've read about them in romances. I've heard the songs of the troubadours. I like them, but they are fairy tales, not reality. They are the highest reality. Desire is beautiful, only if you do not stoop to it. It is a flower not to be picked, lest it die. I would sooner believe the opposite. The desire grows in fulfillment, and withers when it's not fed. But you were talking about earthy love. I know it has its place, but... It is precisely that, earthy. Only love detached from bodies, heat and cold, hunger and pain. Spiritual love between two people is pure love. Am I allowed to love your beauty? Yes. But isn't that the beauty of your body? If you think I have beauty, Heron, it is the beauty of me, my soul, my heart. Not of my body. Would you stop loving a woman were her face to be disfigured? I would love you even if the Saracens 
cut off your nose and your ears. Are you mocking me? No. Perhaps the student cannot understand all this. You mean you'd have to be an aristocrat? Heron, forgive me for saying that. I'll forgive you. You'll abide by my rules, even though they are nightly rules. I'll abide by your rules. Heron, I'm afraid. No, no, you must. This world is terrifying. And I'm so alone in it. No, you're not. <laughs> watch over me while I sleep. I'll watch over you, Claudia. Go to sleep. Thank God you're alive. Yes, Robert, but I'm the only one. Father is dead. We heard late last night. I set out at once. And Elmanolville, have you been attacked? No. Salieu has, and Laon. Yesterday there was a great tower of smoke to the south. That must be La Chaten. What fiends they are. Armed beasts out of a nightmare. Forgive me. Robert, this is Heron of Foix who escorted me this far. I'm grateful. My father will be too. Well, please come with us and accept our hospitality. Well, thank you, but I'm on my way elsewhere. To the sea. To the sea? Come and rest at Ermanon View first. Please, Heron. Please come with us. stories, Uncle, about your deeds in battle. Our deeds, Claudia. We upheld and defended each other, standing and fighting back to back. I mourn your father. He was my loyal comrade in days when nothing was so important as loyalty to man and God. Now God has turned his face away from this world, and its order has broken down. But it will be restored. I'm afraid not. Once, you see, every man had his task, every task its reason, its reward. The peasant fed us, the priest prayed for our salvation, the nobleman defended all. Now, we, the nobles, your people, Claudia, and mine, who are meant to be shepherds, become wolves. Far from defending the peasant, we prey upon him. Who can blame those 
meek men who have fed us from the beginning of time are rising against us. Are you condoning my father's murder, Uncle? It may sound harsh, but I believe right is on the side of the peasant. Well, sir, why don't you join them? I have. I've resigned my rank, and I'm going to lead one of their armies. Before you were born, Claudia, your father and I... Don't you dare talk about him, you who killed him. Heron, will you not challenge this man who murdered my father? It's not my quarrel, Claudia. Coward! What else can a student expect? Forgive me. I'm only blaming myself. I was on my way to the sea. I'm back on the road now. I was a fool to get off it. I want to come too. Did you ever get to the sea, Heron? Yes. What did it look like? Just as I had imagined it. Tell me. A wide, glittering plain, many boats brightly painted. That was a lie. What? I never saw it. I was so close I could smell it. I could hear it pounding the shore. But I turned back. Why? For me? I had to. I was wearing your scarf. You were my lady. Tell them to keep their hands off her. Tell them. I'm going to tell them to put you on a spit and roast you on a slow fire and tear out your heart and guts. Oh. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's painted on. It's what a bishop wears. <laughs> <laughs> a bishop? But I've seen it, I tell you, as he got on his horse. So he's a bishop then? A bishop with tits. <laughs> Ale 
lady, I trust you are unharmed. I am unharmed. I'm Meles of Bohemia, your servant. I'm Lady Claudia, daughter of Pierre of Saint-Jean. I heard of your father's ignoble death. Our next action will be dedicated to you, my lady. Will you allow me to present you with a peasant holocaust for your vengeance and your honor? Such an act of chivalry would place me in your debt. The young man waiting on you may ride with the grooms. He is not my servant. Her and Foy is my protector. Where are you bound for, Sir Malus? Bound for? We are peasant hunting. We will join you. Have you forgotten? The sea, I know. But first... First, a little killing? I owe it to the memory of my father. I spoke to your father once. That evening he mourned the human appetite for death. Aren't these men feeding on death? Peasant and knights both. Do you know what the blue of my scarf stands for? Blue is the color of fidelity. Would you mount your horse, Lady Claudia? Long road leads us unto death. There were my children, precious ones. We soldiers ride to war once more. My sweet song sadness fills my heart. This long road leads us unto death. There were a bright part upon the heart. And basking candles all aglow One corner that I love so much This long road leads us on to death Welcome news, Lady Claudia. Tomorrow you shall have your triumph. The rabble have taken the castle of Ruiz. I propose to take it back. them to surrender. No. Quarter him.
whip them. Thank <laughs> you.
mount your horses. We thank you, Sir Malus, but we prefer to go our own way. Then my responsibility is finished. There is no horse for him. Camping in dunes. I bought a white horse from you. Pale horse of St. John. Walking out from under the fourth sea. The last horse of the apocalypse. Why, for us, St. John, we're all dead. Look at him. He's the only one who's merry. Look at him grin. country is a place from here to the sea. What shall we do? Go back to Amunonville. I'm ashamed to show my face there. I'm sure they have forgiven you. Lady Claudia of Saint Jean. Will you tell your master that we're here? He's he's away. He's gone to the fighting, and young Robert has gone with him. I know he'd want the lady to be received here with. With all hospitality. We thank you. Roger. You were dreaming. Dad! It's only a dream. Dad! You're right. There are so many people who have died. I saw them lying out there in the fields alone. But we are not dead. I want my hour, then they can come and get me. No one will do that. If God saves the world, it won't be for the sake of kings and churches. Perhaps it will be for the sake of two people loving each other. This used to be my favorite time, dusk. It makes me sad now. Another day has gone. We live within our own calendar. There's no ending to it. There is, but I'm not rebelling against it. Perhaps it is a part of love to know that it has an end. That morning in your garden, do you remember? Yes, I remember. Did you love me that first morning? Yes, but I hadn't spoken the words. Speak the words, Heron. I love you, Claudia. I love you, Heron. We'll continue our way. We'll reach the sea. Don't you believe it? I believe that we shall reach the sea or that we shall die. Either way, I will have had my hour. And I, 
my freedom. separated in the first attack. The fighting continued all day and all night, and in the morning, in the morning, our army had scattered. He will return. Your dress is all in tatters. Your mother's dress. I've ruined it. I'll find you another one. Oh, let us three love and stand by each other. Near its end, you say, crows are cawing its last refrain. Friends, let's help it on its way. But first, let my love be in my arms and I in my bed again. I should be jealous of you, Helen, but I'm not. I'm happy at your happiness. I drink to it. Except that I have no more wine. What do you intend to do when you reach the sea? Go aboard the first ship that will have us. Bound for? Anywhere. England, Scotland, Ireland. It doesn't matter. What matters is that we are taking our fate into our own hands. Robert, come with us. Very well. I shall. We must wait for my father's return, though. Of course. While we're waiting, you could teach me Latin, if you're willing. I'll teach you. Say something in Latin. Finemque potentia surly non abet. Finemque potentia surly non abet. It's not so difficult to speak Latin as I thought. I drink to the three of us. There's a brave bird. He's kept himself out of a lot of pots. Pleasant pots, lordly pots. Perhaps he declared himself a neutral. <laughs> Robert! Surrender yourself, give up your hostage, and we spare the house. Hostage? What hostage? The Lady Claudia of saint Jean. No one is holding me here as a hostage. We are friends of Robert of Loris and stand beside him. Will you fight me if I come out? I can't. You're no longer a knight but a renegade. Come and we give you a quick death. Here is something to help you make up your mind. It's my father's. He'd never let it off his hand unless he were dead. Are you coming, little Robert?
Yes, yes. Uh, but at this abbey I enjoin you to few words and no names. The daughter of a royal intendant may be sheltered at my discretion, although not, of course, within our early confines. This is a place of asceticism. A young man may have three days here if his express purpose is mortification of the flesh and purification of the heart through fasting and sustaining life on gruel and water. Forgive me, Father, but we purified our hearts yesterday by eating a crow. Do you state your purpose to be mortification and purification? Yes, Father. Very well. Follow me. What happens to this lady? Her sister will come for her. She will stay in an outbuilding. Father, we beg you a favor. Would you marry us? Now, in this chapel. You tell me your purpose was purification of the heart. Yes. You dare ask this in Charles? It is a pure wish and I share it. I will not grant you license to satiate your flesh. Be gone from here. You will both leave this house.
Georgia. Nuns fled too. Either fled or been carried off by the devil. <laughs> they must be trying to get to Paris. Perhaps we should. No. Please not. Promise me not. I don't want to keep on running. Even if. No matter what. To keep running on and on would seem pitiful. Like a deer with hands on its traces. We aren't to be pitied, are we, Heron? No. We aren't. That isn't to say I wouldn't be afraid when the moment came. You would be there, and... Meanwhile, we have the whole abbey to ourselves. I can be mistress of a house again. <laughs> some candles. Take me, Claudia, for your wife. Yes. Will you, Claudia, take me, Heron, for your husband? Yes. In nomine Padre, Fili, Spiritu Santo. And in the name of love. Sorry you came back from the sea. No, I'm not. Tell me again how it looks. A great glittering plain of water. Very pure and bright. Slowly counting up and down. We heard the sound of death approaching. It rose in a great swell. Death came on forever. But we were not afraid. Mm -hmm. 